Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I'm back in the shop working with the laser. Now I'm using the Fox Alien 20 watt riser laser today to be able to engrave this project. Now what I'm doing is actually taking two different files, combining them together, and doing all of the different work in the Lightburn software. So I want to show you how I did it today, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do with a brand new file here, is we're just going to go ahead and bring in the Navy logo. And at this point, it's all grouped together. So if I just click on one spot, you can see the little handles pop up and everything moves together. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and ungroup it. And that's this little icon right here. So let's see if that ungrouped everything. And no, it didn't. So we're going to do this a different way. We're going to highlight everything, hit ungroup, and let's see if that did it. There we go. So now I can cut all of this out. Let's see if I can catch eh, virtually the whole eagle. Let's see what that did. Good, the eagle is now gone. And I'm going to come right through here. We can catch... We got the navy part, so let's go ahead and click and cut that. That's good. We're going to come right up here. I can get these three letters. Same thing on this side. I think that looks good. Cut that. There's actually two parts to the D. And I think I can get both parts of the S. Nope, that picked up that circle. I don't want that. Sometimes it's just easier to do it individually. All right, so this is what we're going to work with. I'm going to keep these stars also. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the stars. We're going to make the stars bigger. We're going to keep this locked. And we're going to make the stars bigger. I think that'll be good. That's 0 0.5710. Let's do the same thing over here. We're going to type in 0 0.5710. And now both stars are the same. So I'm going to just slide these right up over to here for right now. That's going to be the approximate location. And we'll put that one right there. So there we have that part. The next thing I want to do is put the uh, text in here. And I'm just going to come over here to the text menu. We're going to type out we will never forget. That is going to be the text that we have to work with. And now I want to be able to put the text on a path. So we're going to create a circle. First thing I'm going to do is change the color of it. We're going to make this circle, uh, let's make it red. And I want to make this as a line. We're going to bring this over now. I want to get this sized about where it needs to be. That will be about centered. That's about centered. So the width of that is 6.6. .6. So let's unlock this. We'll go ahead and put both of these 6.6. .6. That gives me a circle now. So then I'm going to, with this highlighted, I'm going to hit the shift key, highlight the letters, and then I'm going to come up here to the tools menu and put apply path to the text. And there we have it. So now all we need to do is just rotate this around. That is going to be just about right. And I want to change the font size. Okay, I need to get a second circle in here. 
So here's my circle and I want to be able to go up here and I want this circle to be the same size. So this was 6.5918. So we're going to come over here and we'll lock that. 6.5918. And now we have these circles exactly the same. So I'll click off of that. I want to add the text now. And the text is 9 11 dash zero one now then with that done we need to be able to get it the same size this text right here was 0.9218 so let's get this one at the 0.9218 and it is so with this highlighted i'm going to hit the shift key highlight the circle now we have everything highlighted go back up to the tools menu apply text to the path and we have that done i can actually flip that around and i can rotate this right around to where i want it we'll slide that up into this area and that looks pretty good so now I'm going to highlight just my numbers and I'm going to put that into the black. Okay, I brought this in now and this is the logo that we're going to put into the center. Now I want to grab this from the right to the left that will capture the entire logo. And then from there I want to be able to turn it black and we're going to go ahead and click on this and slide it over where it needs to be. Now this is still way oversized, but that's okay because at this point, once I get it closed, I can take the little handles and I can go ahead and reduce it and start getting the size correct. That's going to be close. Let's slide it up and let's see. We still need to go a little bit more. So I'll grab this handle again and pull it down. And let's see. We'll slide it up one more time. That actually is looking pretty good. I like that. Now I used that inner circle to be able to get my alignment correct, but I want to be able to eliminate it. So I'm going to, and you'll notice this was segmented to begin with, but that's okay. I'm highlighting each of these segments and I'm just pulling it out, making sure that's the only thing that I have. And then I'm deleting it because I really don't want that circle there. Now that one had one point, but still it's all highlighted. I can cut it and everything is gone. So now I can zoom in. We can take a look at everything and it looks really nice. Now I went ahead and selected the preview. So this gives you the exact image that we're going to be able to engrave. And I'm real happy with that. I think that's going to be good. It's going to take about an hour and 45 minutes to be able to do this. We're going to change the speeds a little bit. We're going to go ahead and increase the speed from the 70 inches per minute up to 85. I'm also going to reduce the power down to 70% power. And I want to verify that the air assist is on. With that done, we'll just click OK. And this image now is ready to be able to engrave. Now the last thing that I want to do is go ahead and highlight everything because remember it was ungrouped. So I want to group it back together. That way nothing can move. If I highlight just one item, you notice it grabs the entire image. That's important. Now I'll come up to the file menu and go ahead and save it. That way I don't take a chance on losing it. Now let's get ready and engrave. Now the material I'm using is the premium pine. Now this is a one by 12. I'm gonna cut it down to size, which is 10 and a half by 10 and a half. And of course I have the sled set up so that my stop block is in position and I can get a perfect square. Now this premium pine is the same material that I've used to be able to engrave the other plaques that I have hanging on the wall. So this will be able to complement the rest of the set that I have. Now it's over to the router table. I want to go ahead and put the same edge on this plaque 
as I have on the others that are already on the wall. And you notice I'm cutting the end grain first. That's very, very important to be able to help prevent the tear out. So I do the one end grain, I flip it around, and then do the other end grain. So please remember that when you're using the router to be able to help prevent the tear out. Once the two ends are done, then it's real easy to be able to do the other part, and you really don't have to worry too much about the tear out. The next thing I want to do is mark the dead center of this. Now, in the design itself in Lightburn, I use the center point as the uh, origin and that's going to be my XY zero position. So I need to do the same thing on the actual workpiece. So at this point I'm just doing the measurement to be able to get the dead center of this wood. Now this is the Fox Alien 20 watt laser. Now this is the riser model. Now of course it doesn't have the uh, waste board and it doesn't really need one. But what I want to be able to do is show you that I'm using a straight edge across the bottom and then I have a little spacer in here that I can actually use to make sure that the material is actually nice and square. And I also use that little uh, aluminum block for my spacer to set the Z height and now I hit the fire button and I'm just going to move down this laser and position it directly over my line that I just made to be able to establish my XY zero position right in the center. And here you can see a good close up of where that fire button is shining directly on the little X that I had made. So at this point grab the glasses and hit start and it'll go ahead and begin the engraving process. Now taking this extra step to be able to align everything it ensures that the project is actually square to the laser. And that's important. I don't want this image to be crooked on the project board itself. So I can hardly wait to see this image develop on this board. This is really exciting. I like this image a lot. Now I want to give you a close up. This is really turning out nice. Now remember this is 85 inches per minute with 70% power. And if you recall from the other designs that I had done with a different laser, I was using 70 uh, inches per minute and 100% power. So it's an advantage of a different laser and the advantage of having the air assist. So this really does make a difference. It looks fantastic. Also, even though we're going faster and with less power, if you recall from those other videos, this image is much darker than those other images were. So again, we've got a 20 watt laser and we've got air assist. So the image definitely looks different. And by different, I mean it looks fantastic. The speed is better, the power is less, the image is darker. That's a perfect combination. I did want to zoom out, kind of show you the setup. I have my laptop sitting next to the Fox Alien riser. 20 watt laser and it's doing great and remember you don't need to have this board glued down or held down in any way and that's because there's nothing actually touching the uh, wood itself it's just a laser light and it's not going to be moving so you all you have to do is just place it where you want it make sure that it's aligned and you're ready to be able to engrave so hopefully today you've been able to see just how easy it is to be able to take two existing files and combine them into one. Now the flag and the eagle is an image that I've had actually for quite some time but I've never actually engraved it. And I was just waiting for that perfect project and I think I found it. This turned out really nice. So if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on any of the different projects that I'm doing. So again, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching today. And I also want to thank the Patreons for their continued support of this channel. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you in my shop on whatever project that I'm working on.